Lagos is on the move to greater heights under the leadership of Governor Babajide Sonwolu, who is putting to best use available resources and effective resourcefulness to create a smart, sustainable state anyone can dream of. From infrastructure to security, business and information technology, government is delivering the dividends of democracy to Lagosians. Welcome to Inside Lagos. I'm Ade Doja. Salam Ade Nii. Security matters remains on the front burner in Lagos State after President Muhammadu Buhari joined the Lagos State government to officially hand over patrol vehicles and various security equipment to security agencies in the state. Who were there? It is President Muhammadu Buhari's first visit to Lagos since Governor Babajide Sonwolu came into office. Security at the police college venue of the event was watertight. The president will be witnessing the handing over of 150 double cabin vehicles, 30 saloon patrol vehicles, 1,000 ballistic vests and helmets, five armored personnel carriers, 10,000 units of gas canisters, two anti riot water cannon vehicles, 200 security bikes, and numerous security configured pickups. And for troublemakers whose pastime is attacking security agents and infrastructure, President Buhari didn't mince words. The federal government takes very seriously our constitutional oath to secure the lives and properties of the Nigerian people. We are well aware of the fact that lasting security is a necessary foundation for business investment and the true prosperity. This is why we have demonstrated and continue to demonstrate our commitment to comprehensive police reform in Nigeria. Indeed, no federal government since 1999 has been as committed as our administration to reforming and the repositioning of the police force and the national policing architecture. In 2019, I signed into law act establishing the police trust fund, the first in the history of the force, to provide guaranteed funding to support police welfare logistics and equipment. In September 2020, I assented to the bill amending the police, the Nigerian Police Act, which was originally enacted in 1943. This new act, a vast improvement over the old one, among other things, supports out the modalities for the implementation of a national community policing scheme in Nigeria. This new scheme will build confidence within our local communities and make them active stakeholders in the safety and security of their environs. We are currently recruiting 10,000 new police officers to reinforce our personnel capacity across the country. In addition to this, I have directed the national sal salaries, incomes, and the wages commission to carry out an upward review of police salaries and benefits. 
let me also use this opportunity to command the leadership of the force for the reforms being implemented in the area of police pensions. Even as we strive to improve police welfare and capacity, we equally have our expectations of them. First, let me command the Inspector General of Police and the entire force for the recent efforts to restore peace to troubled parts of the country. I have charged the Inspector General of Police to leave no stone unturned in rebuilding the morale of his officers and men, especially in the aftermath of the mindless violence associated with the end SARS protests, as well as the recent spark of attacks on police stations in some parts of the country. A nation that turns its police personnel and infrastructure into targets of violence and destruction is a nation on the first of self-destruction. We will act firmly and decisively against any and all persons fomenting or carrying out attacks on our police force and other security personnel. Let me also use this opportunity to reiterate that my directive to security agencies to shoot any person or persons found illegally will be AK 47s and other assault weapons remain in place. As Commander-in-Chief, my primary responsibility remains the security of the country and the safety of all citizens. Despite the many challenges we are facing, I want Nigerians to rest assured that we will secure this country. This is not the first time the Lagos State government will be equipping the security agents in the state. After the ANSAS protest attacks on police formations, there was need for new and sophisticated equipment for effective security. Then Governor Sonwoli used the occasion the again state. to call for the special the economic status economy. for Lagos in the, in the presence of, of the president. We have always been a strong believer in the principle of government working together for the benefit of its people. Security is one such area that requires active and continuing collaboration across all tiers of government. Lagos State is very proud to have pioneered the establishment of the Lagos State Security Trust Fund, a model that has since gone on to be replicated in several other states in our country. The idea of a security trust fund is simply to mobilize private sector financing and support to equip our law enforcement and security agencies in terms of equipment, logistics, and welfare. In the almost 14 years since it was established, the fund has committed substantial resources to making Lagos the safest, most secure, and most prosperous commercial location in the whole of Africa. Today, Mr. President, we're handing over the following brand new crime-fighting equipment to the Lagos Police Command and other security operatives. We're handing over 150 double cabin vehicles, 30 saloon patrol vehicles, 1,000 bulletproof vests, 1,000 ballistic elements. We're handing over 1,000 handheld police walkie-talkie and radio. We're handing over 200 security patrol bikes. We're handing over five armored personnel carrier. We're handing four high-capacity troop carriers. We're handing over two riot water cannon, which we, we got the support from the IGP in Abuja. And we're also handing over other command furniture and other accessories that will be used in the office for our various security operatives. We're handing over this equipment as our own way of assisting both the Nigerian police force to rebuild the violence and the, and the destruction that followed the unfortunate incidents that we saw last October. As you know, police personnel and infrastructure were significantly impacted by this incident. Since then, the state has been feeling the negative effects, a rising wave of criminal activity by persons who clearly seeking to take advantage of our seemingly vulnerability. 
Your Excellency, Mr. President, distinguished guests, no society can survive without a motivated and well-equipped police force. Hoodlums and criminals know this, hence the relentless attack on police installations nationwide. It is our responsibility as a government to ensure that their inferior aims are not achieved. They seek to demoralize us and destabilize the police and other law enforcement agents. But we will continue to boldly proclaim, not on our own watch will this happen. We're determined to provide to police all the support they require by way of additional equipment and logistics. We will also ensure we we'll continue to salute and celebrate the courage and the dedication of our police officers who in the face of many challenges daily put their lives on the line to secure our streets, our neighborhood, and our various communities. And we will continue to brainstorm and advocate on the ways to best achieve the kind of national policing architecture that will most effectively and efficiently serve a large and diverse country such as ours. We are determined to stabilize the security situation in Lagos as our own contribution towards a lasting national security architecture. In adding to these ongoing donations of equipment to the police and other security agencies, Lagos State is also investing in cutting-edge security technology in line with the pillars of our governing agenda, which seeks to transform Lagos into a 21st century economy. We believe that the Lagos of the 21st century, where Lagosians should come to take CCTV cameras for granted. Mr. President, we're currently installing almost 2,000 high-definition cameras, CCTV cameras, in your states. We've done over 160 as we speak, and this is connected with our statewide fiber optics network. In addition to this, we're equipping our law enforcement personnel in the state with body cameras to improve accountability in the delivery of law enforcement functions and to build a public trust and confidence for our citizens. As the nation's largest subnational economy, most populous states, and the state with the smallest landmark, we occupy a very unique position in our country. And it is in this vein that we make passionate requests for you to grant Lagos a special economic status. We believe this status will improve our efficiency at managing some of the infrastructure that serves the national economy. And as every investment in infrastructure of Lagos is an investment that will ensure a rapid development growth in Nigeria. I'm pleased to report that the Lagos State Government, in conjunction with our various local government, has expanded our numerous resources on crime fighting equipment and other apparatus being handed over here today. I want to urge the Nigerian police to do everything in their power to ensure that these assets are handled with care and a sense of true ownership and responsibility so that we can, we can last for as long as possible and maximally deliver the intended outcomes, which is to sustain security challenges in Lagos State. Let me also use this opportunity to sound a note of warning to all criminals who are operating in Lagos State or planning to operate here. All armed robbers, whatever name you are called, kidnappers, cultists, traffic robbers, bandits, and other criminals, we will leave no stone unturned in making Lagos inhospitable for you. We will find you, we will look for you, wherever you may be locking, we will bring you down with the full rate of the law on you. I want to assure Mr. President, as well as the Governor, and all the people of Lagos State, that the MPF and other beneficiaries of this donation, of these equipments and tools, will be put into judicious use, effectively and efficiently, in advancing the collective safety of Lagosians and Nigerians in general.
that donation of this security equipment and vehicles to the State Police Command and Rapid Response Squad shows the state government's willingness to put an end to the raging insecurity in the state. Residents are urged to use the security line 112 to communicate suspicious persons and activities. <laughs> President Mohamed Buhari has inaugurated the 157 kilometer Lagos Ibadan standard gauge rail project at the Butemeta station, now known as the Mobolaji Johnson station. Governor Babajide Sonwolu says the standard gauge rail project is a testament to the federal government's investment in Lagos State. One of the projects this administration prided itself on is the construction of railways. Nigeria plans to spend billions of dollars on its rail network in coming years. The aim is to cut the increasing cost of transporting goods around the country and make traveling around the country safer. While the National Integrated Infrastructure Master Plan estimates that Nigeria will need to invest $2.9 trillion over the course of 30 years to develop the necessary infrastructure, a series of projects in the transportation sector are already set to boost the economy in the short and long term. President Buhari at the flag off of the Lagos Ibado Railway Line says, this signal yet another milestone in the drive of his administration to revitalize the railway system, establish it as a choice mode of transportation for both passengers and freight. He believes it would serve as a transportation backbone that can transform industrial and economic activity in the country. This would be beneficial to the economy through employment from new business opportunities and wealth creation. The Federal Ministry of Transportation and Ministry of Finance have been directed to vigorously act on engagement and reaching financial agreements with appropriate co-financiers to partner with the federal government for the development of the Ibadan Kano Railway. It is indeed a great and memorable event for all of us here, especially given the amount of resources, time and energy expended to put this long coming vital infrastructure in place. Perhaps what many may not know is that this infrastructure development project had faced so many challenges in the course of its execution and delivery. And without the full support and safest encouragement of Mr. President, this event would not have taken place today. Infrastructure is of paramount importance for every nation's growth, development, and progress. Acknowledging the challenges posed to the economic growth by absence of strong and effective infrastructure, Governor of Lagos State Babajide Sonwolu says the rail line will ease commercial activities to other neighboring states. With the commissioning of this rail line today, it will now be possible for people to walk in Lagos and live outside Lagos, and of course, vice versa. It will re radically transform the life, the work, and the leisure for multitude of our citizens along this corridor. The Federal Ministry of Transportation and Ministry of Finance have been directed to act on engagement and reach financial agreements with appropriate co-financiers to partner with the federal government for the development of the Ibadokano Railway and the connection to the Tinkan Island port, as well as the West East Coastal Rail Line from Lagos to Calabar linking Onicha, Benin, Wari, Yanagua, Port Harcourt, Abba and Uyo. Five hundred million naira, that's the amount given to property owners affected by the rehabilitation and upgrading of Ijede Road that consists of Itamaga and Ewelepe by Governor Babajide Sonwulu. Have a listen. Ijede is located in Ikurudu, a city situated in the northeast of Lagos State. The communities suddenly witnessed an influx of people that the infrastructure could not cope with the population. In December 2019, Governor Sonwulu promised the people of Ijede of new road within 18 months. 18 months was the delivery date, but to the amazement of the people, it was delivered in 17 months. 
The rehabilitation and upgrading of the new Ijede Road Phase 1 consists of Itamaga, Iwelepe. We have delivered this project ahead of schedule. When we gave it to you, we didn't even know that pandemic was going to happen. But even in the thick and thin of it, you kept promise, you kept faith with our citizens, you kept the hope of our people alive. We're also handing over almost 500 million naira today as compensation to various religious bodies, to schools, to individuals that are on the Gogbo Ahmed Bala Tinubu Road that we're also doing, that construction is going on there. The appear with those whose houses gave way for the road upgrade. Among those compensated is Ace Comedian and actor Babatunde Omidina, popularly known as Babasuwe. The 6.5-kilometer road would not only improve connectivity and traffic flow, but enhances property values. Residents say this is the relief they yearned for years. This area looks like we are in the corridor. Members, Initially, you cannot, you can't, members, even most of the people who have property here decide to leave this place because of the situation. I'm coming from Ijere town now and I spent um, lesser time, or like before, that we have to spend like three, four hours. So I think the road is very, very good now. Ijede Road is a major strategic road that cuts across for local government areas and local council development areas. This is a major strategic to a carriageway that leads to Ijede, Berigbe and Agura Town and other 37 communities here in Ikorodu. The governor also inaugurated the new constructed Ijede local council development area secretariat. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonwolu has unveiled a five-year climate action plan targeted towards achieving a carbon-neutral smart city by year 2050. This comes just as the state government resuscitated the Lagos International Climate Change Summit where notable decisions and actions will be taken to ensure a sustainable and resilient future. Rising sea levels, biodiversity loss and changing rainfall patterns are some of the dimensions of climate change witnessed in various countries across the globe. Following this concern, the Lagos State Government held its eighth International Climate Change Summit, targeted at adapting health, energy, agriculture, transportation and waste infrastructure to the long-term impact of climate change. Commissioner for the Environment says the year 2050 will be significant for the world, especially developing countries, if something urgent isn't done. It is time to be strict managing with our NDAs DNA towards building the future of the world. It is our expectation that this summit will be a veritable platform for our solutions. Permit me to remind us that it is remarkable to know that two of our agencies today, Lagos State Parks and Garden Agency, last part, and the State Water and Energy Commission were created as a result of the outcome of the past summits. Other participants say the global rise in temperatures, believed to reach above 4 degrees this century, calls for more action to keep the planet within Liverpool temperature of 1.5 degrees. Further increase with a warming of 2, point, of two degrees Celsius with much impact in sub-Saharan Africa. Therefore, we must begin to build adaptive framework alongside our mitigation programs that does not jeopardize the future of our children. Community waste strategies for underserved communities is also ongoing in the next five years. And scaling up biodigesters for households and communities. We now have biodigesters that can give us energy. So your Ewedu, your Okra, and all the garden waste can become energy for you and also give you manure. The Swiss Consulate General in Lagos is here to support the establishment of economic relationship between Switzerland and Nigeria and amongst other activities to support Lagos in finding solutions to challenges related to climate change. Meanwhile, Lagos State Governor Babajide Songwolu implored residents to support and adopt a sustainable action plan that will ensure zero carbon emissions in the state by 2050. The onus is on all of us 
to collaboratively do everything necessary to save our environment, to mitigate the adverse effect of climate change, and to make our, plan our planet more pristine and more livable for all of us. We have a rich pipeline of projects being undertaken to address climate change and fast track the attainment of our zero carbon goal, which we believe will happen across transportation, it will happen in our healthcare initiative, in energy, in agriculture, and certainly in waste management. The summit, which is a gathering of accomplished resource persons and experts, is expected to proffer solutions and a way forward for a sustainable and resilient Lagos. And that does it on to this edition of Inside Lagos. Many thanks for being a part of it. Before we go, remember that it takes a mind that believes to achieve. Thanks for watching. I'm Adedoja. Salam Adeni.